from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's like it's 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Six six, Jay, you're on with your professor on Like It's 101. Hello. Yeah, how are you, buddy? I'm okay, Jack. Nice. Uh, I just wanted to give you a call. AIDA, Attention, Interest, Decision, Action. Everything that you say is 100% true. The worse you treat them, the more you get laid. And the hotter a chick is, the more screwed up she is. And we all know that. You're 100% right. Uh, the last seven years, you've done so much great things for me. Um, but... Great story for you. Uh, I get on the freeway at National, or Washington National, you know what I'm talking about, by the, on the 10th yeah. freeway? Uh-huh. I decide to, every day, when I'm sitting in the tunnel over the over, under the overpass, to blast it as loud as I possibly can so it echoes through the, through the tunnel. I have this fat, sloppy broad next to me on the right on her cell phone, and she looks over and she says, Can you turn that disgusting pig off? And I said, I'm sorry, darling, I can't hear you. And I turned the as loud as I possibly could. <laughs> and she rolled up the window, and I just looked at it, and I just went, Wee! It was unbelievable. I thought you'd love it. I can't hear you over your ass. <laughs> but honestly, Tom, the woman that was talking before, they, don't, they just don't get it. And, and because of you, it, it, it's, it's mind-blowing. Is that the hotter a woman is, in my opinion, the more problems she has upstairs, and the easier you can get away with it. That's right. You know? I mean, these guys friends, who waste their time, the, the guys with low self-esteem who go after all the chicks who weigh 150 and above, mm -hmm. I mean, what they don't realize is the hotter chicks have lower self-esteem and are easier to get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand. Well, I mean, my, my buddy, he, he's all worked up over this girl, and I said, I said, you got to act. Like, you don't need it, and you get it for free, because the more you chase them, the, the less you're getting from them. You know, the the more you do that, you, you're screwed. You know, once That's you right. grab your balls, it's over. That's right. You know, and I say, don't chase them, replace them. <laughs> right? Don't buy. Don't buy when you can lease. Exactly. Can you blow me up, Tommy? Of course I can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Nate on the Tom Likas show. Yep, Tom. Yep. Nate. Am I on the Am I on the air? Oh, did you want to be on the air? <laughs> no, man. I'd rather just talk to your your uh, production assistants. Okay, I can make that work. <laughs> he wants to talk to my production assistant, Dean. You got a new friend for life there. Yes, see. Dean's complaining he got demoted. That's uh. It's not that he's associate producer. Now he's a production assistant. He went from AP to PA in no time at all. 1-800-5800-TOM. He, oh, he's willing to talk to me. Well, he's going to have to wait a while because I'm busy. Uh, let's say hello here to Derek on the Tom Likas show. Hey, what's going on, Tom? How you doing, bud? Doing okay, Derek. I'm doing all right. Here on the show tonight, I realize I'm in a particular minute. I ain't got no chick living with me, but my roommate here is uh, Captain Savo. He met some girl, pretty nice chick. Finds out she's a porn star, gets a little upset with the whole deal, and uh, tells her to pretty much quit the industry if she wants to stay with them. So she quits, and she continues living with us now, and now he's over it. She got no place to go, nowhere to do, and uh, 
I don't know. I've been pretty rude about it, putting posters up saying these curtains got to go and whatnot. And it's not working. I'm saying, what's a nice way, a respectful way to pretty much get her out? So, or have her walk the plank. I don't get it. Like, what's, what should we do here? Well, is she paying rent or anything? No, she's not paying rent. Why did you allow that? I don't know. I, I, I do my best. I bring home all kinds of tell, and he's starting to see what he's starting to get the vision. His little. Yeah, but, you, but, you know, but, the, but there's different – bringing somebody home for a night and bringing someone home to live are two different things. Yeah, tell me about it. I'm trying – I, I realize I'll sit here listening to your show, laughing at a few of your callers, and I just had to realize, you know, like, what should I do? I need to get here, get her out. She needs you know, to walk like, the There were commercials on TV years ago for a product by Black Flag called Roach Motel. Have you ever seen the Roach Motel? <laughs> yeah, I have. And, and the commercial used to say this on TV. They used to say, roaches check in, but they don't check out. Oh, man, that's the truth. That's how you have to look at women. They're like roaches checking into the Roach Motel. If you let them in, they're not leaving. That, it's, it's crazy. It's, Do you know how many times I've had to call the exterminator at my house? Let me tell you. That, I, I believe it, and that's exactly what's going on. And he, like Everybody sees it around him, but he's, he's so blind to it, and it's, it's, it's ridiculous. You know? well, I, but why do you tolerate it? I do tell them. I, every, we don't even, when I, I come home, it's, I can't even kick it with them because she gets upset. Let me ask she you is, a question. Do you, uh, do, you have a, do you have a lease? Uh, no. So why don't you leave? I, I guess that's what my, my program is. I need to leave, huh? Get on my own program. Right. Because you know what? If your buddy doesn't have your rent coming in, how's he going to do this? Uh, he, he lives a good life. He, he knows what's up. He pays the bills, got everything cracking. Money's not an issue. It's, it's, yeah, but it's, you're it's, paying half the rent. Yeah, this roach is... I guess I get some some raid. If I were you, I'd, I'd get the out. hell out of there. All right, bud. Well, and you, you see what happens? Do not let the roaches into your house. There it is. I said we're trying. I'm not going to stop the store and get some raid on the way home right now. <laughs> yeah. You take me out the bunk hit, Tom. Here you go. No cough. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to um, Jason. So many good calls here. Jason on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yeah. How are you, Tom? Good to talk to you. I'm an avid listener. Good. Hey. I hope you can hear me. I'm in an elevator. Um, listen. What I what I wanted to say was just one simple piece of advice uh, to all my uh, <clears throat> all my brothers out there, and I say this with affection. And out of frustration, not out of anger. Uh, guys, stop being so goddamn desperate, for Christ's sake. If you have to try and go through anxiety and financial hardship to get laid, whether it's a girl you've been living with for a year, she wants to get married, or whether it's a girl you met at the bar and she wants you to buy her drinks or take her to dinner, is the sex really worth it? So what you have to do, guys, is stop caring. You have to just stop caring. You can't act like you don't care. You have to actually resign yourself to the fact that there's going to be plenty of nights where you might go home alone, empty-fisted. But on the nights when you do get a girl, it's going to be completely worry stress-free. won't have right. to spend money, won't have to put in any effort, and <clears throat> that's quality boom. In my, in, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Well, I find, look, I'd rather hook up less often and spend more time with my friends or more time getting my house together or working on projects and making more money and things like that. Absolutely. And then, and then when I'm with a chick, it's no strings attached. It's hit it and quit it. Absolutely. With somebody out of the bullpen. And they know what to expect. You see, when you when you... When you finally resign yourself to the to the idea of of not trying to screw everything that moves and not not pulling out all the stops and spending money and trying to you know bust out everything you can just to get a piece of mediocre ass, uh, then you actually end up being more successful. And you know you'd be surprised, you would be amazed. I'm sure you know this, Tom, but I mean this to to you know any of the listeners. You would be amazed if you meet a good-looking girl and you get her phone number and you don't call her. She calls you. And even when she calls you, you don't ask her out. You don't even ask her over, you know, to come over to your house for drinks or anything. You just wait for her to ask you out. 
and they'll be so they'll be so confused because they're waiting for you to ask them out. And when you don't, then they'll say then they'll ask you out, and then it's a sealed deal. And then you're not inviting them out, so they don't expect you to pay for anything because they're inviting you out. And and you know, case in point, the the girl that was on uh, about a half hour ago was going on and on. How many times did she refer to herself as a as a hot piece of ass? Yeah, and you know? believe me, she, you know, I guess if she says it enough times, she thinks it'll become true. Yeah, well, no, no, no. Case in point, what's what's happening is that she's she's begun to believe that it's true because she has so many desperate guys begging to take her out and pay, you know, spend money and, and, and take her to dinner. She she said, and I, and I quote her, she said, I can't go out to dinner with every single guy that asks me out. Well, I, I, can't have sex with a, I can't have sex with a different guy every That's single right. night. As if she should have the choice. As if she should have that power and, and, and hold that power. That's what I'm saying. Guys, don't give them that position. Don't give them that power position. Don't invite them out to dinner. Stop doing it. And once you stop caring and you resign yourself, like I said, to maybe going home every once in a while alone, then it makes it that much easier and the girls start calling you. It's much more effective. It's a much more effective strategy. So I would, I would, I would amend the, the notion of, of or the strategy of treating them like jerks, you know, like being jerks to women. I would say you don't have to go that far. I would say you just have to com- treat them with complete and utter indifference. Complete and utter indifference. Well, and you know, indifference is uh, not a bad way to go, but the jerk thing also works. I got to tell you. Sam Likas, 1 800 5800 866. I had a girl stay over and she asked me if she could borrow a shirt to wear to work. When I said, I really don't know if I'm breaking a Likas rule or not, so I don't know if I should let you borrow a shirt to wear. And she said, well, if you want to live your life by a talk show, you go right ahead. I don't only live my life by the talk show. I live my life by the king of all talk shows, Mr. Zach, Tom Likas. It's Likas 101 on the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show, Likas 101, with your professor at 1-800-5800-TOM, Garrett. Hello. What up, Tom? Not much. How's it going, man? Great. Well, I have a little trouble and some advice that I need from you. Okay. Do you mind if I smoke a cigarette while we talk? Is that cool? No, go right ahead. Well, basically, I've been a listener for a while, just by the way, and I wanted to tell you that uh, I love your show. Thank you. Um, Basically... I feel like uh, I don't know how to be a jerk to a chick. I feel like I'm from the South, I'm from Texas, and I've always been overly nice, and yet I always end up getting screwed over. I feel like I'm just end up wasting months of my time. Yes. And I don't understand. I feel like when I, you know, my boys who actually do get any chick they want, it seems, I don't know how to quote unquote be a jerk because I feel like if I am I would just be like over the top like scare a chick away I'd be such an ass you know? well guys like you have to do with the exact opposite of what your instinct tells you to do if you ever feel a compulsion to send flowers don't if you yeah, feel a compulsion I... to spend money don't spend it just do the opposite of what your instincts tell you how do you I don't know I, like so when I don't know like I take a girl out it feels like you want to do those things for them, you know. I don't know if they, you know. Why? Because you grew up in Texas. By the way, we love Texas. I do, let me just say that if you were in Texas and all you were dealing with was girls, and I'm not talking about from the big city. I'm talking about other parts of Texas, okay, uh, your way would probably be very effective there. So but in the big yeah. Yeah, but in the big cities, and that includes Dallas, by the way, in the big city, you know, the girls are sharks. Tell me about it. <laughs> and so and so, being a gentleman does not work. Uh, oh, they love it when you're a gentleman, but they don't respect you, and they don't give you what you want. They mistake being a gentleman for weakness. Like, you don't have the, the balls to close the deal. Now, we've spent a lot of time in Texas, and I know what a Texas gentleman is all about. And you boys want to get laid just like we do, but you have a different way of approaching it. 
But in right. the big city, in the big city, let me tell you, in the big city, the girls perceive that as a, a sign of weakness. That's cute and all, but uh, so, but you know, I, so the, yeah, they end up hanging around, but they never, nothing ever happens. You become their gay friend. Yeah, exactly. And I'm right. I'm sick and tired of that, dude. I really am. Yeah. So I don't care if you're in Dallas, which is the big city of Texas for sure, or Los Angeles, or any big city in the United States. You get to treat these these women like sharks. Well, I'm and in L.A. now, so everything's changed. You know, I'm out. I've been out here for like a year, and it's all different. That's for sure. Right. So when you have the urge to open a woman's car door, don't let her open her own car door. Can you give me specific examples of, let's say, I'm out with the chick and how I go about? Is it just with buying them things, or specifically? Well, first of all, you want to avoid dinner at all costs. And if you do go to dinner, you want to go to some small, cheap place with a hypnosis factor. One place we recommend, and we don't get any free meals, and they don't advertise, and we have no connection to them other than it's just that kind of place, is a Mexican restaurant on Beverly Boulevard in L.A. called El Coyote. It's been there forever. El Coyote. El Coyote. El Coyote, because El Coyote, the food is cheap, the drinks are cheaper, and the hypnosis factor is there because it's old and it's been around a long time and everybody loves it. Yeah. Now, if you took a chick there, she'd love that just as much as a place costing three times as much. Yeah. Plus, plus you would seem to be a cool guy because you go to a hip place like that. Where does the jerk come in? Can you like? Is there? Can you give me some examples of a yes. scenario of actual things that I should say or think? Tell, you know, tell like, her you'll call her. And she'll assume that means tomorrow. Then wait a week. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes two weeks. Sometimes two weeks. Right. Uh, don't answer your phone on the weekend. Ever. Unless, you know, you got caller ID if your buddies call up. Or if there's a chick who's a guaranteed lay, pick those calls up. The ones you're working, they are your Sunday through Thursday girls. Right. See what I'm saying? Okay. Don't waste so. your fr- If you're going out on a Friday and a Saturday, you better use every condom in your collection. <laughs> I, just, I, just, yeah, I, don't know, I'm, I think you understand, but this is, like, real hard for me. Like, Oh, I do. Oh, like, I do. I do. And by the way, I've been, as I say, not only have I been to Texas, I know how this game works. I understand it. And it's a, it's part of the culture, but it's a, as much a game as any other approach. Because no matter whether you're in Texas or California or New York, wherever you are, guys want to get laid. And there's just different ways to approach it. Right. By the way, Southern women, whether it be in Texas or other parts of the South, oh, they've got that whole act down, too. You know, oh, they're ladies. Mm-hmm. But uh, the real truth is that uh, they've got big brass balls and they want to get laid as much as you do. It's all of the approach. Well, we, I need to I need to learn the approach better. There's you know, there's at the school I'm at. There's just an insane amount of hot women. If just, your mother would be embarrassed by your behavior, you've got it about right. <laughs> well, I really appreciate it, Tom. That would be a good measure. If my mom wouldn't approve of it, yeah. If she'd be like horrified or embarrassed, you probably did it right. Uh, I have three sisters, too, so... Oh, them especially. Yeah. Well, so I'm going to... All right, so I'm going to go to El Coyote. Do I ask the chick out or no? Should I shouldn't ask them out, or I just need to meet these chicks out? Have them... Meet, well, you know, here's the deal. Uh, if you want to get laid that night and you think there's a shot, uh, pick them up. If you think that you're just uh, meeting them to uh, kind of feel them out or they're feeling you out... Make them drive themselves. So let's say there's, okay, there's a particular girl right now that I'm really into, but we just started to talk. How would I go about the first By the time? way, if I were you, I would avoid meals. In, in other words, you go to El Coyote and drink at the bar. If I were you, I wouldn't even eat there if you could avoid it or, or have an appetizer at the bar. Right. Because the more you talk, the more likely it is you're going to say something that's going to give her an excuse not to put out. You know, I, I almost just feel like maybe it's these impulses, because you said this is how the way it is in Texas. It's almost like when you're with that chick, 
and there's these pauses. It's almost like maybe it's like, I don't know, these women are almost just waiting for you just to ante up and just go ahead and pay for their stuff. And not only that, they're waiting for you to screw up in your conversation. They leave lots, lots of uh, silent time for you to fill in the blanks and go blah, blah, blah in the minute. It could be anything. You could uh, reveal your politics or you could reveal where you're from and you could reveal how many women you've been with. You, you, you're going to put your foot in it somehow and they're going to use what you say against you. You want to say as little as possible. Women like a guy of mystery. Yeah. And and some guys, because they were raised by single moms, they've got diarrhea of the mouth. They can't shut up. Yeah. What you want to do is make her talk as much as possible, and you say as little as necessary. Okay. <laughs> Don't tell her anything. What about when they get on that, that little level of just drilling you with questions? Keep your answer short. And then when there's the pauses and you're sitting there about to buy a drink, you don't offer, you just order yourself one and you're right next to them? Well, here's the deal. If you just met her, buy a drink for yourself. If you went out and met her, maybe buy her a drink or two. That's it. If you went out and you met her, or if you already know her, you mean? Like if, like if the two of you met somewhere and you said, let's have a drink. Friday. Well, so when you meet her, all right, you invited her, so buy her a drink or two. Okay. But don't let her sucker you into dinner. Don't let her say, hey, we might as well get a bite to eat. That's that's the worst. Yeah. Because then she's really going to drill you. Well, I kind you of want to get like the... I want to share my present situation, but I'm going to be really embarrassed. But maybe you need to hear about it. All right. Okay, so this girl that I've been talking to now for about five or six months. Oh boy! All right. Um, we have never, we haven't even done anything except make out. How many times have you been on a quote-unquote date? I've taken her out probably. I mean, within the first month, I took her to like four concerts. No. Uh, <laughs> I took. <laughs> done. Done. Over. Over. Three strikes, you're out. And, you know, she's used the whole um, I'm tired thing. Kind of of course. Like, yeah, she's tired because in reality, she has a date to bang somebody else. That's probably it. I'm telling you that's what it is. <laughs> by the way, wow. you know, by the way, Garrett, you know how I know this? Because I've been the other guy. You've been me in my shoes. No, I've been the guy who she's meeting up with later. The guy she excuses herself to go to the bathroom to then talk to. So, so like you're it's, you're it's sitting the there by yourself. The one, the one who the one who's nice they're going to use for for you to spend money on them and not do anything, and the ones who don't do anything for them they're going to they're going to sleep with them. You are buying dinner for our dates. Wow. Well, I'm tired of doing. Oh that. my God! Look at the time. Nine thirty. I'm tired. Well, got to go. Garrett, you're just such a doll. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Tom. I really No, no, no. That I'd be gay. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for citing that for me. Yeah. No, no, no. I... <laughs> no. Have you ever had a woman do that at the end of the evening when you thought you might get somewhere? She's like, oh, my God. Look at the time. You doll. Yeah, so no, nice of you to I, take I, me I, out. I'm the same chick I get. It's already 11.30. It's midnight. I got work. Uh, All right. Or now, um, I had too much to drink. Like, I've over... Like, she's had too much to drink. Like she, does she answer... Drunk. That's perfect. She's had too much to drink. No, exactly. But she's that's too much a, to drink, so she passes out. Well, the, the point is, you want to get her home before she passes. In other words, two drinks, maybe three, and out. Yeah. You, oh, man. you want her to inhale just enough alcohol to get the job done, but not so much that she gets sick. <laughs> All right. And then I'm telling you, does she ever answer her cell phone when she's out with you? Never. Never. No? So that means that she takes it to the bathroom and uh, calls people. Yeah. 
ever, does she ever get a text message while she's with you? Uh, does she get texts while she's with me? Yeah, all the time. Right. Does she answer them? Yeah. She, well, a lot of them she does, yeah. She'll always yeah. check her first. Well, see, I have a rule. Not allowed. What's not allowed? No texting, no telephone calls. On a date with me. So it's what not you, allowed. You say, hey, say, say, hey. I'm not, if you're going to text, then... Hey, if you I'm, look, if you want to be out with that person who's texting, you go be out with them. Yeah. Which, by the way, they're usually going to do in about two hours. Yep. I guarantee you, she goes to the bathroom. And you, the reason I know this, Garrett, is because I've been the guy calling. I said to text message, I say, you still out with that guy? And she writes back, goes, yeah, it won't be long now. Oh, my gosh. Then she says, do you know, excuse me, I've got to go freshen up. Then she goes to the bathroom, and she calls me. Yeah. Yeah, Poindexter here is about to finish up with his dinner, and he's going to pay, and then I'm going to tell him the old routine about being too tired. Uh, where are we meeting? Where are we hooking up? Yeah, i got to drop this chick, man. Right. She's not worth it at all. Right. Wasting she's using you, time. and she, if you think she's not getting laid somewhere, come on. I, I know she is, because she, she asked me recently, she said, uh, she asked me, the, or she had asked me the last time I had been laid or whatever, and then when I asked her, she said she wasn't going to answer the question. Right, because it was the last time you went out. <laughs> that doesn't make me feel better, Tom. Garrett, I'm not trying to make you feel better, I'm trying to make your life better. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Well, I don't know how you do it, man. I don't know how how even you deal with these these chick callers, like <laughs> talking all types of nonsense. They don't even know what they're saying when Tr they're saying it. Trust to you. me, Garrett. I have millions of reasons to to feel good about it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Cutching. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go to. Coyote Sin, then, man. I'm going to check that place out. I actually live close to there. Got to do it. Beverly Boulevard. So do you have any last advice for me in a crash course? Because obviously you can tell I don't have much Three knowledge. Three strikes and you're out. And no single mothers, please. Three strikes or two strikes? Three strikes. And a strike would be if they pulled some lame stuff when you're out. That's one. No, strike. you go on a date and they don't put out. You get they get three chances. Awesome. Well, you know what? I'm going to take this advice and maybe uh, I can give you a follow up call here in the next week or two. Good. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Well, could you take me out Kobe style, Tom? I certainly can, Garrett. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Uh, She's so special to me. Uh, yeah, it beats in my heart. Uh, yeah, the air I breathe. Uh, She's so special to me. Uh, uh, Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. You are just almost unbearable, you know that? You're so pig-headed. The Tom Likas Show. Tom, thank you for tuning in. It's Likeus 101. I am your professor. It's Ray on the Tom Likeus Show. Father. Hello, son. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. All right. Appreciate everything you're doing. I uh, thought I'd call in. I'm in a little bit of a sweet bliss or uh, nervous bliss right now. And okay. I got a question for you. Yes. I got a, uh, I'm scheduled to get a vasectomy at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Yeah, it's uh, it's a little nervous going up to it, but uh, kind of looking forward to the uh, not having to worry anymore. Good for but, you. Uh, Do you have I've, a girlfriend uh, or anything? What's that? Do you have a girlfriend or anything? I'm seeing this one girl, but no. I, st I got hooked on to you uh, at about the beginning of this year, and I've listened to like almost every show. And I'll tell you what, Tom, 
This summer, I've gotten laid more than I have my entire life. I love it's unbelievable. that. Unbelievable. Very nice. I'll tell you, the best, the best advice you have is that one line you keep telling people. What time are you eating dinner? Right. That's the best, man. It works so good. <laughs> the question I had for you was, you, you've had shows about, like, you know, people having vasectomies, and you were like, hey, go for it. It's good. But you never give out the advice to do it, and I think you've said before that you don't have one. Or you I don't have it. one, and the minute I recommend it, someone's going, why don't you have one? You know, so <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm I certainly think- in favor, and I'm cheering for you. I think it's great. I, I was yeah. I was just wondering why you never got one because you said you don't want kids. Fear of doctors, bad experiences with the medical profession, uh, not a good enough reason for you not to get one. But uh, it's just me, my family. I grew up poor with lousy doctors, um, so I, it's, exp- it's the experience I've had. But but you getting it, I think that's fantastic. Now the chick you're seeing, don't tell her. No no no. I'm not. I'm not even telling my friends. It's like a wildfire. You tell someone that, everyone's gonna know. Don't tell anybody. No, nobody. You'll have chicks wanting to do you and telling you to take the condom off and stuff, and they're, they're yep. going to think they're going to nail you for money. Well, it, yeah, and you had that one show where you, t- you read the article about, you know, people younger and younger getting them, and you had all those guys calling in, like, uh, you know, their wives they were going on with, their girlfriends saying that they were pregnant, and they're just like, well, you know, tough ass. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I just started calling in and, uh, Tell you that, uh, a little nervous, but it's going to pay off. And uh, just kind of wondering why you never gave it up for advice, that's all. I, I do recommend it to you. Ah. Well, I can't wait. <laughs> just wanted to let you know that. Uh, take me out of old school, Dad. All right, son, here you go. one 800 tom This is Amber on Likus 101 with your professor. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you doing tonight? Great. Good. I just wanted to let your listeners know, if if you're a girl, you might as well listen to your advice as well. Because I'm in a relationship right now of eight months, and I am his main supporter. Doesn't have a job, doesn't go to school. He's 20 years old. You're getting exactly I, what you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you'd say that, too. You are? What was that? You're getting exactly what you deserve. For supporting him, for paying for everything, and giving him everything he wants. Well, why did you get into a relationship with a guy like that? I didn't know he was like that, Tom. Trust me. Well, maybe you didn't know him long enough to be in a relationship. Well, he's changed a lot. I've known him for seven years, and he was not like that Darling, you were 11 seven years ago. You don't know anything about anything. True. You think you know more than I do. I tell you, don't have a relationship until you're at least 25. All right. I'll take your advice on that, Tom. No relationships. Go out and uh, have fun. Date guys, get laid, whatever. You don't have to be in a relationship. What's the rush? I don't know. No, no. Seriously, what is the rush? There's no rush, really. Oh, but you, you, I've known him since I was 11. It's like, what is that? Well, he's always been a really good friend. That A good friend does not make for a good relationship here. That's true. And I've been listening to you for so long. I don't know why, why I didn't listen, like, why I didn't follow it. Well, because you thought you knew more than I did. Oh, never. You know. I mean, really, what you need is my handprint on your ass, and then that would get things going. (laughs) Long long pause. Yeah, I suppose. (laughs) You've never had my handprint on your ass, dear. You have no idea. And you're listening to yourself on the radio, so it's time for me to go. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. Richard on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. Teacher, Richard. how are you? Great. Hey, I got a story for you. Um, just happened last night, and I got to preface this by saying, you know, I've only been listening to you for months, and I wish I had heard of you before, but girlfriend broke up with me last night. We were supposed to go to San Francisco this weekend for her birthday. Well, 
So after she breaks up with me, she calls me today at work. I don't answer, of course. She calls my cell phone, calls my work line, calls my cell phone, calls my work line. Like, I need you to call me back ASAP. Like, just for the sheer, you know, wonderment of what she's going to say, I call her back. And she goes, okay, well, since we're not going to go to San Francisco, Richard, um, I want to take uh, – I am going. I found someone else to go with me. I go, who is it? She says, another guy. And, and I'm like, oh, okay. So, and she, what she wanted was to take my ticket that I bought, which of course I had already canceled because, you know, I'm not a tool. And, and she calls and says, you know, we want to take, take your tickets and go to San Francisco. Can you transfer them? And I said, you must be crazy if you think that I'm going to give you my tickets. You can go to San Francisco with another guy. And what did she say to that? And she said, no. And I said, oh, well, I already canceled the ticket. She says, you have no right to do that. I said, well, wait, wait, wait a second. They're on my credit card or my ATM, my debit card. They're my, it's my money, and it's all under my name. So how do I not have the right to do that? By the way, and, Richard, tell the audience your age. I'm 24. What are you doing in a relationship? Well, now, now, like I said, I hadn't heard the advice of waiting till you're 25 until just now because I just started listening to you. So from now, here on out, and I just turned 24, by the way, so... You know, it's obviously going to be till I'm 25 now that I've now that I've learned from the professor, Tom. And by the way, it's beyond being 25. It's also until you have reached your dream or your career sure. goal, whatever is that, whatever that is. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, 25 isn't the magic marker, but that's just like you should either way, regardless of where you're at. I, I agree with you. Like, there's, you know, I'm 24. Why do I need to be in, in a relationship when I could do whatever I want any night of the week? Right. But anyways, so it's not that I. I thought I knew more than you, and I just learned about you. Unfortunately, like I said, I wish I had known about you before, but I, I do dig your show, so I just thought you'd get a kick out of that story, and it's just, you know, I guess it's just par for the course of girls and what they think. You know, a good-looking girl thinks she can get whatever she wants. That's exactly right, Richard. You're exactly right. I, I thank you for that. Mike on Like Us 101, hello. Hello? Is that a question or a statement? No, it's just a statement. Sorry about that. Uh, I just wanted to thank you for saving, you know, whoever listens to this at all from my fate, which has been married since 19. I'm 24. Good work. Yeah, I've got I've got two kids. I was in the military, and, you know, the military kind of brainwashes you to have kids so they can, you know, have more troops. But, you know, because brats become troops. <laughs> uh-huh. No, well, anyway... Uh, my wife is, she's a pretty cool chick, you know, she takes care of my kids, but she uh, is pretty much a, you know, top of the line, hammer to the face to me. And I was wondering if, you know, if you could help me out at all, even though, you know, I'm already in hell. Well, a, I mean, all I can say to you is the sooner you get a divorce, the less it costs. Oh, uh, okay. Wow. Just to get out of it, huh? Mike, Man. that's what happens. <laughs> you know, if I would have known, you know, it's like hindsight's twenty twenty. Well, I keep trying to tell the boys, but many of them think they know more than I do. <laughs> well, I have jumped in the fire, my friend, and I have gotten burned, and it doesn't feel well. Time to go. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Mark, I've got a minute. Make it good, Mark. All right, Dad, I've got a quick story for you. When I was 21, I had a vasectomy. Here about nine months ago, I got a call from my bullpen. She told me she was pregnant. I told her, it's not me. And she said, it is. And I said, well, too bad it's not. And well, after the kid was born, she had the DNA test done and everything. And of course, it's not mine. And she tried to get me for money, child support, everything, until she found out it wasn't mine. And then she found out I had a vasectomy. <laughs> that is the greatest feeling of my entire life, her lying to me and me going, well, it's not mine. And apparently it wasn't. So, How did she react when she found out the truth? She kind of looked like someone hit her in the brick with a face. She looked very surprised. Someone hit her in the brick with a face. <laughs> I like that. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.